Hello! Today we're talking about the metric system. Did you know that scientists all across the world have to be able to communicate with each other? And in order to do this regarding the measurements that they take, they use the metric system. That way, somebody in the United States who publishes a paper can effectively communicate with somebody in England who publishes or who looks at, is looking at the same thing. So we're starting our discussion today with metric length. If we compare English and metric units, you need to know which one is the larger unit. Just a note, as we go through this presentation, the green numbers in the presentation refer to the questions on your paper. So as you see these green numbers and as you hear me go over the answers to those green numbers, make sure you are copying down the correct answer on your assignment. So which is longer, one mile or one kilometer? If you said one mile, you'd be correct. This line over here represents a mile, and you can see that one kilometer stops right there. Uh, it takes 1.6 kilometers to make a mile. So which is longer, one yard or one meter? In this case, the metric unit is longer. A meter stick extends all the way out to here, but a yard stick stops here. Finally, one inch or one centimeter. Back to the English unit for the longer term. One inch is longer than one centimeter. On this zoomed in picture of a ruler, you see an inch stops here at the top, whereas a centimeter is way back here. One inch is actually 2.54 centimeters. Number four on your assignment says the basic unit of length in the metric system is the meter, which is represented by a lowercase m. So anytime that you are writing meter, usually you'll see a lowercase m as the abbreviation. Take a look here at what a meter looks like in the real world. Athletic tournaments throughout the world measure in metric dimensions. This diving board, 10 meters high. An Olympic-sized pool is 50 meters long. Meter, base unit for length. Meter, about as long as a baseball bat. A meter can be the length of an average person's long step. For most people, that is. The height of a handle on a standard door is about one meter from the floor. So now you can see what a meter looks like in the real world. But where did that meter come from? The standard. The standard represents, or the standard means where we actually determined, okay, this length is going to be called one meter. And the standard for the meter was the distance traveled by light. Think about how quickly light travels. It's really fast. In an absolute vacuum. Hmm, an absolute vacuum, where do you find that? Well, in this case, the absolute vacuum was space. So the meter is the distance that light goes in space in 1, 299,792,458 of a second. That's really, really fast. Let's continue. To be able to understand metric units, it's important to know, when we talk about the prefixes, it's important to know how many of something fits into something else. So we could say that one kilometer equals 1,000 meters. If you're talking about a kilometer, you're usually talking about a pretty far distance. And that distance would be the same as going 1,000 meters. One meter is equal to 100 centimeters. And finally, one meter is also equal to 1,000 millimeters. So knowing those three things, let's see if we can compare units within the same system. Number eight, which is larger, one meter or 105 centimeters? Think carefully. Up here we said that one meter equals 100 centimeters. So that means 105 centimeters must be longer. Number nine, four kilometers or 4,400 meters. Up here we said that one kilometer equals 1,000 meters. If we multiply by four, we get 4,000 meters. 
so 4,400 meters is the larger unit. 12 centimeters or 102 millimeters. Here we say that one meter is equal to 1,000 millimeters. What we don't tell you is that there are 10 millimeters in a centimeter. In this case, 12 centimeters is longer than 102 millimeters. And finally, number 11, 1,200 millimeters or one meter. Here we see one meter has 1,000 millimeters, so 1,200 millimeters is longer. How many millimeters are in one centimeter? If you look at the image of the ruler here, one centimeter goes from zero to one. A millimeter is represented by these lines in between. So you can see that one centimeter equals 10 millimeters. We can count them. One, two, three, four, five. Notice the five mark is a little longer, which is helpful when you're trying to measure something. Six, seven, eight, nine, ten. So now it's your turn. What is the length of this blue line in centimeters? Well, we have zero, one centimeter, two centimeters. Does it go all the way to the three? No. So to represent the space in between two and three, you use a decimal point and you count the lines that it goes to. So this would be two whole centimeters, point one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. This line is 2.8 centimeters. What is the length of the line in millimeters? Now we need to know exactly how many little lines there are. But there's an easier way than counting every single one of them. If we know there are 10 from here to here, all we need to do is count by tens. So we say 10, 20. We don't go up to 30. How many lines were there again? Here's 20. This represents 25, 26, 27, 28. The line is 28 millimeters. And number 14 is asking you to round. What is the length of the line to the nearest centimeter? Well, if we go past the five mark, you round up to the next nearest centimeter, which in this case is three. Very good, let's move on. So we've talked about metric length. Now we're going to discuss metric mass. Again, let's compare the English units that we're familiar with with the metric units. Which is larger, one pound or 100 grams? In this case, one pound is much larger than 100 grams because a pound has 453.6 grams in it. One kilogram is larger than one pound, however. So if you're measuring yourself in pounds when you step on a scale, you're going to have a smaller number than if you're measuring yourself in kilograms. 100 kilograms is equal to 220 pounds. And finally, one ounce or 1,000 milligrams. One ounce is a larger unit than 1,000 milligrams. A milligram is a really, really tiny amount. Mass refers to the amount of matter in an object. So matter is the stuff an object is made of, the atoms that a than an object is made of, which gives it mass. Let's take a look. 1,000 grams? This package of ground beef is one kilogram. Remember, there are exactly 1,000 grams in one kilogram. This five kilogram roast can easily serve over 10 or 12 people. Whereas a 10 kilogram turkey should serve about 20 happy appetites. Kilograms can be very heavy. 40 kilograms requires a strong back to carry. But 1,000 kilograms is one ton. At home, around the world, kilogram is the base unit for mass. So the video says that the kilogram is the base unit. And technically that's, that's kind of correct. Because the gram is such a small amount, if you held a paper clip in your hand, that would be one gram. Because the gram is such a small amount, uh, 
the scientific community and across the world, people say that the kilogram is actually the base unit. But when you're doing your conversions later, converting between milligrams and grams and grams to kilograms, we will use gram as the base unit because that's kind of in the mid middle of our, of our prefix line. Mass refers to the amount of matter in an object. Number 18 in your assignment asks, what is the base unit of mass? The base unit of mass is the kilogram and it's represented by kg. Where does that come from? The standard is that one kilogram is equal to the mass of the international prototype kilogram, which you can see is pictured here. This is a platinum iridium cylinder kept in France. They keep it in a controlled environment, so nothing can be added to it, nothing can be taken away from it, and when they measure this, they know that they're measuring one kilogram. Number 19, just like with meters, we need to know how many kilograms is equal to how many grams. In this case, one kilogram equals a thousand grams. One gram equals a thousand milligrams. So knowing that, think about which of these is larger. 1 kilogram or 1,500 grams? Well, if 1 kilogram equals 1,000 grams, then 1,500 is the larger unit. Number 22, 1,200 milligrams or 1 gram? Well, if 1 gram equals 1,000 milligrams, 1,200 milligrams would be larger. Number 23, 12 milligrams or 12 kilograms? Hmm, that one should be easy. 12 kilograms is much, much larger than 12 milligrams. And finally, 4 kilograms or 4,500 grams. That one's tricky. There are 1,000 grams in a kilogram. If we multiply by 4, we get 4,000. So 4,500 is the larger unit. So how do you measure mass? In order to measure mass, we use the triple beam balance. When you place the object on the scale, which is here, place it on the pan, then you move the weights, which you see here, on the beams until you get the line on the right side of the scale to match up, which is here. Once you've balanced the scale, you add up the amounts on each beam to find the total mass. So what would be the mass of the um, object measured in this picture? Well, we start here with the largest beam. We have 300 plus 70 plus 3.1234. So that's 373.4. This is how you use the triple beam balance. First you place the film canister or whatever you're measuring on the scale. Slide the large weight to the right until the arm drops below the line. And then move the rider these objects are called riders. Move them back one groove. Make sure it locks into place. You repeat this process with the top weight. When the arm moves below the line, move it back one groove. And the smallest weight, which doesn't have any grooves in it. Here, you can slide the small weight on the front beam until the lines match up. This line would equal zero in the middle. And then you add the amounts on each beam to find the total mass to the nearest tenth of a gram. Our final lesson on met the metric system is about volume. Let's compare the English to the metric units. Which is larger, one liter or one gallon? If you said one gallon, you're correct. A gallon is equal to 3.79 liters. This picture shows water bottles that each hold one liter, and this shows one gallon. One liter or one quart? One liter is larger than one quart. This shows, sorry, this shows one liter. This shows a quart of oil. One quart is equal to 0.946 liters, so they're almost the same, but a liter is slightly larger. And finally, one milliliter or one fluid ounce? One fluid ounce is larger than one milliliter. If you look at a can, like a can of soda, one 12 ounce can of soda would equal about 355 milliliters, 
which you can find that measurement if you look at a can it will show you the measurement in milliliters volumes the amount of space an object takes up sure measured volume of gasoline or the volume of most any refreshing beverage volume is the amount of space in a contained substance like water in a swimming pool measured in liters which has more 750 milliliters or one liter you're absolutely right there are exactly 1,000 milliliters in one liter So the base unit of volume, number 29, in the metric system is the liter, which is represented by capital L. Where does that come from? That comes from one cubic decimeter, meaning 10 centimeters by 10 centimeters by 10 centimeters. You can actually measure volume, both liquid volume and solid volume of regular objects. You can measure volume using a container that holds liquids or you can measure volume using a ruler. Length times width times height is equal to volume. So one liter is 10 centimeters times 10 centimeters times 10 centimeters. For number 30, it's important to know that one liter equals 1,000 milliliters. If we looked at each of these blocks as a milliliter, there would be 1,000 blocks in this cube. Number 31, one milliliter equals one centimeter cubed if you're measuring solid like length times width times height or one gram that was that make sure that when you realize that it, you're referring to water so number 32 which is larger one liter or 1500 milliliters well if one liter equals a thousand milliliters then 1500 would be larger 200 milliliters or 1.2 liters 1.2 liters is larger than one than 200 milliliters and finally 12 centimeters cubed or 1.2 milliliters hmm 12 centimeters cubed would be the larger term so how do you measure volume to measure liquid volume we use graduated cylinders to find the volume of liquids and irregular objects things like a rock, something that doesn't have nice straight sides that you can measure with a ruler. When you use a graduated cylinder, it's important that you note that there is something called a meniscus. You read the measurement based on the bottom of the meniscus, which is the bottom of the curve. When using a real graduated cylinder, make sure that your eye level with the level of the liquid that you're measuring. So what's the volume of water in this cylinder? Well, here's 40, here's 45, here's 50. So this is 41, 42, 43 milliliters. What, so what causes that meniscus? And here you can see a real life image of a meniscus. The meniscus occurs because the liquid that you're measuring is attracted to the container. So it actually kind of sticks to the sides of the container. And where it's closest to the container, it will kind of climb up the container. So take a look on your assignment number 36, 37, 38. What's the volume of water in each cylinder? And here I've eliminated the meniscus for you, so you don't have to worry about measuring that. But make sure that you understand that each of these graduated cylinders has a different interval, has a different scale. Pay attention to that. So when you're looking between 50 and 60, what do each of the lines in between represent? Do they represent one, two, maybe fives? What, were you, what would you be counting by? It looks to me, if this is 50 and this is 60, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. That means each of those lines is worth one. Record your answer to the volume for number 36. When you look at 37, notice the scale is different. This is 30 milliliters, this is 35 milliliters, and this is 40. So if this is 35, 
1, 2, 3, 4, 5 to get to 40, that must mean each of these lines is also worth 1. Record your volume of the liquid in, for number 37. And finally, this is the trickiest scale. If this is 20 milliliters and this is 25 milliliters, we aren't given individual lines to count, so here you're required to estimate. What number would be halfway between 20 and 25? If you said 22.5, you're correct. So this line, which looks to be about halfway between 20 and 25, is 22.5. But notice the volume is slightly more than that. See if you can estimate what that volume would be. When you measure solid volume, you use a different, uh, a different technique. You can measure sol solid volume with a ruler if your object is nice and square and has nice straight sides to measure. To do that, you take length times width times height. So for number 39, what is the volume of this cube? The length times the width times the height. However, if the object you're measuring is uneven, like a stone or a rock, you use water displacement in order to figure out the volume. For number 40 on your assignment, how much water is in the graduated cylinder with, with the object? So that would be this one. Notice your scale. Here's 200. Here's 300. What do you have to count by? 10, 20, 30, 40, 50? Nope. 20, 30, I'm sorry, 20, 40, 60, 80, 100? Yes. So each line represents 20s. Fill in the amount of water that the graduated cylinder shows with the stone in it. Number 41, fill in the amount of water without the stone in it, which is this line. And then what is the difference? You need to subtract. Subtract number 40 minus number 41 to give you the volume of that stone. That's the end. If there are any questions, please make sure that you email me, send me a link message, whatever you need to do, and I'll be happy to help.